Rim shot back beads are actually very important for three reasons, and you've probably heard these rim shots on some of your favorite records, whether you've realized it or not. Today we're breaking down why you should learn how to do this right now. We're showing you all the tips and tricks for the best snare height, snare angle, stick grip, stick type for really pulling this off well. We wrap up with a super practical, actionable exercise for developing pro sounding rim shots. Let's get going. Hey, as we get rolling today, I wanna to give you a free gift. It's in the description below. It's called the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. It's a free PDF e-guide that breaks down the basic core steps to achieving freedom with your hands. We wanna have freedom with our hands so we can play as fast as we want to, as loud as we want to, and quietly and not feel clumsy also. Go check out that free guide. It's definitely gonna help you out. All right, on with today's lesson. So first, we really need to define what is a rim shot backbeat, because really there are different types of rim shots, and there's an infinite number of places you could strike the drum and still be playing a rim shot. And the more commonly known rim shot, maybe depending on your background, might be the more jazz style rim shot where it's like. Where you're hitting out here close to the edge. So you're getting a whole bunch of ringiness from the snare, and that sounds great, you know, when you're playing jazz. That sounds cool, and you've got all the different mixes of rim. And as you shift the stick more down, you get more head sound, and so that's really cool and really fun and musical to play around with. But that's really not the kind of rim shot we're talking about today, because in most styles of rock, you're not gonna play. You could, you could depending on what style and sound you're going for, and there are drummers that do that. But what we wanna do is actually play, pretty much hit the middle of the drum as we would normally hit it. So hitting it where we would normally hit it, maybe slightly above center, but roughly right in the middle, and then just land the shaft of the stick right here. You can see on my sticks where the rim shots happen. It's almost halfway up the stick, just a little bit before halfway, a little bit closer to the tip than halfway. And that we want that part of the shaft to hit the rim so that we're basically getting just the same type of sound if we were hitting in the center, but we're getting even more depth out of it, even more low end and just punch from the drum as well as the high end frequency, the crack. And so you get just that ear splitting, God, that really cool rock snare sound that, uh, that sounds really great in a lot of contexts. So why is this worth talking about? Why is this? something I'm making a video about. Why am I trying to convince you that you need to practice rim shots? We're gonna talk about how to practice them, how to get really good at them, but there are three main reasons why they're so important and why you should learn them. Number one, we need a loud snare that will cut through the mix and that can be heard above the sound of cymbals. Like if you're playing on open hats or you're crashing on a cymbal, the snare backbeat needs to be loud enough to still be heard. It's very easy for it to get lost if you're not hitting it hard enough. But if you play a loud rim shot on the snare when you're playing rock, that means the snare is still heard and still felt over the sound of the cymbal. So it makes it easier to mix the kit and balance things out for a better feel. Number two, you really can't get that crack, that just full of attack, open bah, snare sound that you hear on a lot of your favorite records without playing a rim shot. It's, in theory, if you're recording, you can make it sound that way by hitting dead center and then doing a bunch of processing and adding reverb and things like that to it. But if you're playing, say, an outdoor gig or you're playing in a large room and you want your snare to be strong and you want it to be heard and felt above the sound of the cymbals and the backbeat is important because you're playing rock, then rim shots are going to be the way to go where you've got that crack so that it's, it's felt, it's heard well, you're pulling pretty much the maximum frequencies out of your drum where you're getting some of the low end that you feel in your chest, you're getting some of the, the, the high end sizzle and just openness and even a little bit of ringiness that you might want. And so in order to get that crack, you've got to hit the rim shots. Reason number three, you just want to be versatile. You know, I've, I've played in a lot of different sized rooms where I've played lightly and definitely not played rim shots, but I've played in a lot of larger rooms where I've needed to play rim shots. And anytime I'm recording, unless I'm playing super soft or I want that sound of, of hitting very lightly, I'm pretty much always doing rim shots. And so you want to be versatile. You want to be a versatile drummer and you want to be able to do these things. Uh, kind of another fourth reason actually is when you practice rim shots, it forces you to create a consistent, steady, repetitive motion with your left hand and also with your right hand. So you want to be able to do it with your right hand too in case you're 
either playing open-handed or you're doing alternating 16ths on the hats. But it forces you to work on that consistency of getting into a rhythm, getting into a motion with how you're hitting, which helps all of your other backbeats sound great too. So maybe you're playing more lightly and you need to hit dead center and not do a rim shot. Well, the fact that you've put in the practice to master rim shots, that's going to actually come to show when you're playing more lightly too, because you're establishing a motion, which is also going to help your timekeeping, everything else also that you're maybe even doing on cymbals, because everything in drumming is about motion. We want to have steady, smooth, almost like a circular motion where we're loose and the sticks are moving in this steady motion. So that way we can achieve the same sound each time. And so that's what we want to do with the rim shots. Now, in order to do this easily, in order to play steady, loud, two and four backbeats on the snare, especially as rim shots, you want to make sure you've got your snare height and angle optimized to the way that you're sitting at the kit. Now, I can tell you where I've got mine. I can show you the exact angle and degrees of where my snare is. And I could, I could even measure the height of it for you and tell you all these things, tell you how high I'm sitting. I'm 6'4", and so I can give you all these measurements and maybe the ratio could be the same for you where if you're a little shorter, then you're gonna go a little lower, et cetera, et cetera, or if you're taller, then higher. And so you can try to imitate exactly what I'm doing, but ultimately you've gotta find what works for you and you've gotta find what is most comfortable to you in terms of setup here. Whenever I'm playing rim shots, especially rim shot backbeats, I'm actually moving my hand more toward about 6.30, left hand 5.30 with right hand if the drum's a clock. And that way the butt end is not hitting my leg because the way I'm sitting, I have my snare low enough that if I were to play this kind of rim shot right here or right here, the butt end is like hitting my leg. And so that's a common issue you're gonna run into where you could opt to raise your snare higher to avoid that or have less of an angle. Some drummers do crazy stuff. I watched uh, Jack White perform on SNL a few months ago and his drummer was doing all sorts, like he had a crazy setup. This guy was fantastic, sounded great, but he was making this crazy snare angle work. And some people do that, and some guys who want to play traditional and play rim shots, they've got their snare tilted back this way, like the, the whole jazz setup. And so you do what you got to do. You do what works for you. For me, I like to have it tilted a little bit toward me because I want to also be able to just hit in the center if I don't want to play rim shots. The last thing I want is to go and just totally miss a rim shot and just hit the rim instead because it's too flat. And so I want to have enough angle that I can err on the side of hitting the middle. But because my legs are right here, I actually have to move to here in order to play the rim shots. Also a really important tip. I've, I've played so many rehearsals and gigs where I'll be playing and like my rim shots just won't be happening. I'll be hitting the rim and not actually hitting the head too. It's really frustrating and then I'll notice after the fact and I'll feel like such an idiot. I'll realize, oh, my snare is actually tilting this way. And so for me, for the way I'm playing with matched grip where I wanna play both rim shots here, I've gotta have the snare angled exactly toward my center. If it's angled toward my right knee or my left knee or any other direction, it's gonna get thrown off. It's gotta be centered up. It's gotta be symmetrical where it's level from left to right and it's tilted down directly toward my center. That's been so important for me. It might be so important for you too. Sometimes the only way to check that is to literally crouch down and like get right here on your stool and look your snare straight on and see, okay, is it tilted exactly this way? And if not, turn it a little bit until it is. As ridiculous and as detailed, I don't know, nitty gritty OCD as that is, sometimes that's hugely important and that helps so much. And so I've done that before and moved it just a tiny bit and suddenly all the rim shots feel way better. And so sometimes it's just something silly like that that's keeping you from being consistent because it's actually the snare's not working in your favor the way that it's tilted. The other thing that's, this has proven to be a super important tip strategy for me if you're trying to play rim shots, but you're gripping your stick up here, or maybe thumb is on the American flag of a Vic Firth stick, this is a great place to grip if you're wanting to play just light, loose rebound. Or especially if you're keeping time over here on the cymbal. Then you need to be gripping, you know, up here, so you've got that light kind of rebound. But if you're playing rim shots, you want to be able to lay into the drum more. You're playing more into the drum. 
Normally we want to play off of things. We want to play off of drums and go. So we're flowing from thing to thing more easily and we're, we're staying steady in our motion because motion is so important. But when we're playing rim shots, we're kind of going against that. And we're laying into the drum more because uh, the rim shot actually absorbs a lot of the stick's energy and it's not going to naturally pop back up. So you can get away with gripping closer to the butt end. And so I'll actually, if I'm playing rim shots, I'm gripping down here where I've got like my thumb on, on a mirror of the American classic uh, logo on the Vic first sticks. And you can see about this much butt end coming out on the end. And that's what feels great to me. And so I'll actually, if I'm playing and I've got my right stick, like right here, I'm gripping here, keeping time. And then I come over here to play a fill on the snare. I will let the stick shimmy down to here. So it slides out of my hand a little bit so I can have both of them right here. It's just a lot easier that way. Basically, it gives you more throw. It gives the stick more throw, more weight. And so it's easier to just throw it down and the rim shot tends to happen more naturally versus if you're holding up here, you're having to work a little harder to do it. And so it ends up just not being as consistent and not feeling as good. And so if you want to play a steady, loud rim shot, grip closer to the butt ends, that's actually going to work really well. And then practice shimmying back and forth so that maybe let's say let's say you're playing like a snare cadence kind of thing then you might be gripping here and so practice going from there and adjusting your grip on the fly in other words sit there and practice singles like you could even do this on your practice pad sit there and practice singles on your pad going and gradually, as you get louder, let the stick slide out a little bit until you're full on like rim shot grip. And then as you get softer, practice crawling your hand back up in real time as you're playing. Because by the way, stick slippage is such a natural thing that's going to happen, it's unavoidable. Uh, the sweatier and stickier your hands and your sticks are, the less of a, an issue that might be. And you can use Vic Grip sticks that have coating or Breathe on your hands, put on lotion, wax, pour soda on your hands, whatever you gotta do to make sure you can grip well. But a lot of times that stick slide is inevitable and we actually want to be able to adjust where we're gripping our sticks anyways. If we're playing lightly, we'd rather grip here. If we're playing heavily, it's better to grip down here for those rim shots. So practice going back and forth smoothly. That's gonna help so much with your rim shots, gripping down here instead. Stick size is also worth mentioning. I like 5B sticks. When I'm playing loudly, I like 5Bs. They feel best for rim shots. Though. I could also use 5As. I could do a rim shot with a 5B. I could do a rim shot with a 5A. It feels a little better to me with the 5B just because it's a little heavier. And if I'm going to play loudly, I'd rather have a bigger stick. I don't like huge sticks. 5B is as big as I want to go. The 5B extremes are a little too long in my opinion. Uh, but 5As are great too. I wouldn't go any smaller than 5As if you're trying to play rim shots. I found that thinner, smaller sticks and lighter sticks, it's harder to just lay into the drum and it's harder to get a consistent sound that sounds really good with a smaller stick. So 5B is my sweet spot. I've also played around with 55As, those are good. But 5As are about as small as I would go for playing rim shots. But they're a good in-between if you're playing a gig where you might be playing some rim shots and then other songs you might be more chill. Now, how do we practice this? How do we practice smooth, steady rim shots? So what I used to do when I was first getting into trying to get really good at rim shots, realizing, okay, I need to have lots of dynamic range in my playing. I wanna get really good at playing rim shots. I would actually take a towel. I've just got these bandanas handy right now, piling these on here. Muffle the top third or so of your snare. Yeah, that's good. That way it's a good dead snare sound that you'd probably never actually use on a gig. But it makes it easier to hear the rim shot. When you've got snares off, the less noise going on, you've got it muffled so the note length is shorter, you can very easily tell whether or not you're hitting a rim shot. So here's dead center. Here's rim shot. You can probably hear that difference even on your end through the mics here. I can definitely hear it just in my naked ear with my in-ears out. Here's dead center. Here's rim shot. And so it can be kind of loud, so I would recommend like putting some earplugs or something in. And if you've got mics and in ears, that's even better. But it's not super loud, so you could practice this without ear protection if you've got enough dampening in the room that you're in. And so just sit there and over and over again, play rim shots. Aim to hit right in the center, or you could go slightly above center by like half an inch, if that feels good to you. 
but just do it over and over again. Turn your metronome on. You could even have a song going and like do it in time with the song. Uh, but you do want to be able to listen carefully at first and make sure that you're you're hearing uh, what you're doing. That way you can then connect that with the muscle memory. You want to hear, okay, am I playing a rim shot or not? Okay, now I'm playing rim shots. How does this feel? So once you know you're doing the rim shots and it's sounding like a rim shot, how is that feeling to your hand? What do you need to adjust? There's a lot of these tiny little details that have to be adjusted, these minute little subtle things that your hands learn to do so that it becomes more autopilot and you don't have to think about it. But practice it with both hands. So that rim shot I just played there, that was more rim heavy. I didn't really like the sound of that. I'd rather be a little bit more head heavy. So you want to find that balance and get to where you can do it that way over and over again. So that one was a little better. And just see if you can make each one sound exactly the same. And then right hand too. Just do it over and over again and then practice going and go a little faster or you could even go. That can be cool because when you're going that fast you can really hear any slight inconsistencies. I'm also stiffening up my, my grip a little bit as I'm doing that because as you're going faster and you're still playing rim shots you do have to be a little bit more firm with the sticks versus if you're just going slow. You can be pretty loose there, but as you go faster. It also depends on volume though. If you're playing loud rim shots, you can actually stay pretty loose. If you're playing quieter rim shots, you actually have to be stiffer. It's kind of interesting how that works. But if you're playing loud rim shots, you can just be wide open, loose, just hitting the drum. Works great, sounds great, feels great. If you're doing lighter rim shots, you can be a little bit more firm. But practice in both ways. Practice playing softer and still steady rim shots because quietness leads to control. Soft, steady rim shots go a little louder and then do super loud. And that's, you're just going to get better and better at this. You're going to develop the habits, the muscle memory, so it'll become much more autopilot. And so do that. Flip your snares off. Put some muffling on the top third of your drum. You want to make sure your stick isn't hitting whatever towel you've got on there. And just practice hitting it, listening. Play around with the tuning of your snare, too. I've got this one sort of medium, I guess. Rim shots are going to feel different depending on how you have your snare tune, so be aware of that also. Then your next step, you can just turn this into a groove. So you've been doing basically singles as rim shots, so make it into a groove, just add in the kick. Also do it with the right hand. You may notice, even if you're right-handed, that it feels weirder hitting the snare, you know, doing backbeats with your right hand, just because it's used to keeping time. So you might want to spend more time with that. Spend more time getting the right hand comfortable, because a lot of times you might play grooves that are like. Or you might want to get better at playing open-handed. And so practice those rim shots with the right hand. Get just as comfortable with each hand. Be able to play fills as rim shots. Pretty much on any rock recording out there, if there is a fill that goes ga, 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 it's rim shots. That's how you make it really cut through and punch because you want snare fills to be powerful. Otherwise, if it's softer than that, it gets lost in the mix. You want it to really cut through. Sometimes I've even heard on recordings where maybe the drummer's doing dead center backbeats, where it's not rim shot backbeats, but then a fill comes around and suddenly it's rim shots. That way the fill really punches through and is heard. So something to consider also. Then flip the snares on, take the muffling off, whatever you want to do there. I would throw my jingly thing back on to kill a little bit of the ring. Although the ring sounds really nice on this drum when it's tuned a little higher. Uh, so total personal preference. Then just play a groove. And so just practice groove. Start off with something really basic so you're focusing on those rim shots, making sure they're steady and sounding good. Sometimes it's a little harder to tell if you're playing rim shots or not sound-wise when the snares are on. That's why you want to make that mental connection between the sound and how it feels from your hand when the snares off. That way you're able to do it more based on feel and then muscle memory when you're actually playing a groove when you're playing a song. Extra tip, non-official product endorsement. This is something I bought a long time ago when I lived in an apartment. 
The Arton Black Hole is a really great practice pad, really practice head. It's a drum set practice system. You snap this thing onto your, your snare over the rim and you can actually tune this mesh head and it feels really good. It's got very accurate rebound. And what's cool about it is you can play quiet rim shots because it's got this rubber rim around it. And so I used to use this to practice rim shots in my apartment. I think it's the best way out there to practice quiet rim shots. And I found that if I could do rim shots really well on this, then it translated to a real snare drum very well. It was actually easier to play steady rim shots on a real snare than it was to play on this. And so it was a very good workout surface, I guess you could call it. So if you're in an apartment, if you're needing to practice rim shots quietly, this is a really good option. I'm a big fan of these. Artom Black Hole, so check it out. Hope you stuck with me through all this, through this nitty gritty lesson. I hope you're learning a lot, getting a lot out of this, because I believe this is going to help you a bunch. This really helped my playing a lot and helped open up my playing to a lot more volume potential, musical potential, groove potential, being able to do rim shots well. Now, if you're having trouble with this, it's very likely that the hands are the culprit. There's so many times that you work and work at something, but it just doesn't get much better because there's actually something up with your grip. And so that's where you really wanna pay attention to how you're gripping. Are you being loose? Are you using good hand technique? Because if not, then potentially you're wreaking havoc on a lot of other areas of your playing. So all that to say, we wanna get your hands squared away. So check out the free guide I mentioned back at the beginning of the video, the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. This is gonna get your grip squared away. Got all sorts of diagrams in there, photos of, of my grip and steps, step-by-step -step method to help solve your hands. It's four steps to unlock maximum speed, control, even finger agility, so you're building up that speed and you're able to play doubles well, you're able to do ghost notes well, quicker timekeeping. If you're tired of getting tired, if you're tired of getting tired on gigs and not being able to keep tempos up, not being able to play loudly, or you're getting sore when you're playing loudly, or you're feeling super stiff, and things just aren't feeling good, this is the guide for you, this is the method for you, because when you work these core foundational things, it translates to your drum set playing. So this is stuff you can work on your pad, but it's gonna help your drum set playing a bunch. So you're gonna loosen up your playing so you can be louder, faster, smoother, more relaxed, better timekeeping, better feel. This is the guide for you. Fast Fluid Hands Checklist, go grab it. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. We've got a bunch more non-glamorous lessons I'd love for you to check out because this, these are methods I really believe in and people get results. So many of my coaching students and online students get massive results from working the hands and from working just these non-glamorous lessons where we focus on the things that really matter in your playing. So hope you'll join. Hope you'll become a fellow non-glamorous drummer. So subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.